Before we talk about simplifications during grounding, let's step back a little bit. The ultimate goal of an ASP system is to compute the stable models of a given logic program. So this means actually the ASP system has to assign a true or false to each of the atom of the ground program obtained by the grounder. Now actually during grounding, some of these uh, truth uh, assignments may already uh, be found out, right? And then you can use this for further simplification. This is more or less the idea. Okay, so where do they come from? Well, obviously, um, we, when we have facts at the beginning, all of the facts uh, indicate that certain atoms are true, so this can be used for simplifications. But more generally, there is this notion of an atom base. So actually the whole grounding procedures, when we looked at bottom-up grounding, were driven by the atom base. And uh, so in this atom base, a part of the atom base are f can be seen as facts, right? So atoms that have been found to be true, and they can be used to do simplifications then while, while, gr while grounding proceeds. In the same way, we may also identify false atoms. So how, how come? Well, keep in mind that at the end of the grounding uh, phase, the atom base gives an upper bound on all the stable models. So the atom base at the end of grounding consists of all atoms that are possibly derivable. And each stable model must be a subset of this atom base. Now actually, something that is not in the atom base can be regarded to be false and then be used for further simplifications. And at some points during grounding, you may be able to find this out. So for instance, if you finished grounding a subprogram induced by a strongly connected component, uh, you may know that now you've seen all instances of a certain predicate and all the atoms of this predicate that are not in the current atom base uh, will be false and can then be used for simplifications along the line of grounding. Who? Okay, so this was a long blah blah, presumably the longest intro blah blah I've done so far, but I think it's, it's interesting to get these reference points. Now let's look at this a bit more precisely. One thing to realize, perhaps at the beginning, is that Modern grounders like Gringo do simplifications on the fly. That is, whenever they produce a ground instance of a rule, they send it to standard output or they print it uh, and take it out of memory. Now, since they follow the topological uh, ordering and, the sub and ground the subprograms along this ordering, depending on the topological ordering that is obtained, right, whether two subprograms are ordered like this or like this, you may actually obtain different simplifications. Because keep in mind the topological ordering uh, is not unique. There may be different ones and Gringo just picks one. Okay? Good. So this is perhaps just to, to put up front. So in case you want to experiment this, if you shuffle your program, you may actually end up with different simplifications. Good. Let's first of all look at simplifications um, induced by atoms that were found to be true. As mentioned, the very first atoms in the atom base that you can identify to be true are given by the facts in the uh, problem instance. In the same way, actually, when you find out on the fly that other atoms turn out to be true, they then also can be uh, called facts and even output like this. Okay, so this is more or less our setup. We, within the atom base, we can distinguish uh, a subset of true atoms and keep in mind that this atom base grows over time in the same way as the set of true atoms may grow over time and may allow us to do more and more simplifications. Okay, now with the true atoms what can we do? Here's a set of simplifications. First of all, whenever you know that an atom is true, you may remove it from all the positive bodies of the, of the ground instances that, of rules that follow. In the same way, you can drop uh, rules that have a negative body literal with this with, with true atoms because since the atom is true the negation of it must be false hence the rule itself can be dropped the same way actually when you already found out that an atom is true and you want to ground a rule whose head uh, is identical to this atom is this atom right you can stop the instantiation drop this uh, drop the drop grounding this rule instance because you already know that the head of the rule is true so why bother adding a rule that derives this head with conditions right so you can drop this as well and last but not least all this is is a cascading procedure because you start from some true atoms and of course if you're lucky and you derive new ones you will get new simplifications get new true atoms um, and actually, after grounding, you may already have identified a bunch of, um, a bunch of uh, facts that you were not even in the problem instance.
And as we see at the end of this section, there are even subclasses of programs where you can evaluate the whole program during grounding, more or less assign each atom true or false, and the solver doesn't even need to start solving because the grounder has done its job. Okay, let's now look at our example. Let's just look at a few ground rules in our Hamilton cycle example and see how they can be simplified by the true atoms in the atom base. So here we have two rules where we actually know that the positive body literals, namely edge AB and start, a, start of A, are true because they appear as facts in the problem instance. Hence, we can remove them because their condition has already been established and it can simplify the ground rules. So we obtain this here. And now, by doing that, we have established that A is reachable as a fact. Accordingly, we can now do further simplifications with this new true, true atom. And indeed, there is the integrity constraint that says that each node uh, must be reachable. And hence, we can drop this integrity constraint since we know that A is reachable. Well, how does it work exactly? Well, again, reach of A has become true. Hence, this atom here is true. Hence, the negative literal is false. Uh, since the precondition uh, is now false, we can drop the integrity constraint, it has no effect, and we don't even have to ground it. It's not a constraint on our problem anymore, and we can drop it. Okay, so this, I think, gives you an, an idea how simplifications work. Let's now look how simplifications can be done with atoms that have been found to be false. Recall from my lengthy introductory speech to this video that if grounding ends, we know that all atoms that are not in the atom base, that are in the complement, right, must be false. So the good news is that sometimes we can even determine this on the fly and then engage um, simplification since we know that certain atoms are false. Now, normally this is the case when you have seen all rules that may yield atoms with a certain predicates. When you've seen them, let's say they would all be in, the, in, a, in, a, in a component, in a subprogram, and then you know that all the instances that are possible with this predicate, they are in the atom base. Some of them maybe have been found to be true, but in general they are just the possible atoms. And all of them that are not in this set must be false, because there will be no, there are no rules left that can produce instances of this predicate. And at that point, we can engage simplifications because we know that certain atoms have been found out to be false. Right? And the first thing we can do is, whenever we know that an atom is false because it does not belong to the current atom base, and there are no rules of the corresponding predicates to be grounded afterwards, then we know that all negative body literals that contain this atom are true, because the atom is false, hence the negative body literal is true, and we can remove them from the rules. Okay, this is more or less how the propagation of uh, false atoms works. So let's look at our example to well, illustrate this a little bit more. In fact, we are looking at another instance of the Hamilton cycle problem in which node D is not reachable. And hence, there is no path starting from A uh, that actually visits all the, all the nodes. The prob this problem instance is thus unsatisfiable. The question is, however, uh, can grounding find this out? Will actually the simplifications that we can do on the fly uh, be strong enough that, we, that the grounder can decide that the problem is unsatisfiable. Let's look at that. So, here it is. Well, these are not all ground rules that we get for our problem instance, but I'd say the most interesting ones. Let's actually first look at these five here. These are all ground rules obtained for our rule that says an edge is on the path unless it has been omitted. So, these, the, the five heads here are actually in the atom base. And they are possible atoms, right? None of them actually has been found to be true because they all still depend on other conditions. But they belong to the atom base, but these are the only ones of predicate path. So all other instances, like for instance, the instance that there is a path from D to C, or from D to A, or from D to B, or from B to A, right? They cannot be derived. There is no rule that allows you to derive it. Hence, these atoms must be false and can be used for further simplifications. 
And this is more or less all once that we have seen all ground instances with head of the path predicate, this is known, and we can use then all instances of predicate pass that are not in the atom base at that point, once we have ground once we have ground all rules of this form, uh, to simplify negative body literals. And this is actually happening now with the reach predicate. Okay. In the same way as with the past predicate at that point, we know at this point that these are all rules that have the predicate or atoms with predicate reach in their head. There's of course reach, reach of A, which is a fact, uh, because we, we, we have simplified it in that way, because you may remember from before that since A is a starting node, this, this has been found to be true, and hence the rule has been reduced to a fact. There is one rule that allows us to derive reach of B, provided we can, we can derive a path of AB. And there are two possibilities to derive a, a reach of C, depending on the preconditions here. But that's it. So at that point, actually, we know that only reach of A, by well, reach of A will be true, but, but reach of B and reach of C might be derivable, but reach of D is not obtainable. There is no rule that would give us reach of D. Now let's just sort this out again. So we have the atom base and in the atom base we have one instance that is true and this is reach of A. And this has already been used for simplification. We've seen this before. Look, there is no integrity constraint that says it cannot be the case that node A is not reachable. This integrity constraint has been simplified because reach of A is true. Okay. Now, okay, atom base, reach of A is among the true atoms of the atom base. Reach of B and reach of C, these are possible atoms. And this is all we can add to our atom base and everything that is not in the atom base, all instances of predicate reaches that are not in the atom base, must be false. And this is reach of D. So at that point, actually, we know that reach of D is false. And in the same, oh, in, a, in the, in the, let's say, complementary way, as we use the fact that reach of A is true and we were able to eliminate the integrity constraint, something else happens here with this guy. Okay, one step at a time. So we know that reach of D is false. So this guy here is false, reach of D is false, hence not reach of D is true, and we can simplify uh, the, the condition of the integrity constraints. But now there are no conditions left, and this, the empty integrity constraints, indicates an inconsistency, the grounder may stop and say, look, I already found it out, I solved your problem, don't bother the, the solver, your problem is inconsistent. I guess this is a cute little example, but of course it's a lucky strike, right? It's, it's rarely the case that the grounder can find out that your problem is inconsistent, but on the other hand, there are uh, logic programs that can always be completely evaluated by the grounder, and these are the guys we look at next. So, stay tuned. Stratified logic programs constitute a class of logic programs that can be completely evaluated by the grounder. Well, complete evaluation by the grounder actually means that the grounder is able to take the logic program and simplify it into a sequence of facts. This implies actually that such programs can only have a single stable model and hence they are pretty uh, restricted. But let's first of all see what is a stratified logic program. To ease the definition of stratified logic programs, we first introduce the definition of a predicate. These are simply all rules in the program that allow us to define instances of this predicate. Now with this we can define when the logic program is stratified. And this is the case whenever a program can be partitioned into a sequence of subprograms that satisfy three conditions. Now the first one simply says that the definition of each predicate must belong to a single subprogram, while the last two actually enforce uh, restrictions on the dependencies among rules. Now the first one simply says if a predicate occurs positively uh, in a rule in subprogram PI, then the definition of this predicate here cannot be done in a later subprogram. It must have been done in the same or an earlier subprogram. Now the last condition is more or less analogous but a bit more restrictive. 
It says that a predicate occurring negatively in, in a rule in program PI must have been defined before in an earlier component. And this is now in a really strictly earlier component. It cannot be, of course, in a later one or the same. It must be, have been defined before. Now the question is, how come that these rules guarantee that a grounder can evaluate a stratified logic program right away? Well, the simple but perhaps not so obvious answer is that these three conditions allow the grounder to partition the set of instances of a predicate after grounding each component into the true and the false instances of this predicate. And imagine once you have this, then in the, for the next uh, component, you can actually evaluate all negative occurrences. So once you have done that, once you have eliminated all negative occurrences, either by eliminating the negative literals or the, the rules, then you have a positive program. And then we know from the beginning uh, that a positive program has a, a unique set of consequences, a unique stable model. And in this way, actually, you guarantee that you always de keep deciding more or less the instances of, of predicates and compute in the end a single stable model uh, of a stratified logic program. Okay, I know that this was perhaps a short uh, explanation, but to, to, to see it yourself a little bit, just proceed inductively. Think what happens in the, very, in the very first component when grounding this, what properties you get, more or less the ones that I hopefully explained, and then uh, try to do a, an inductive argument to convince yourself that this is the case. Well, just to wrap up again, so stratified logic programs allow us to uh, completely evaluate uh, so, uh, a stratified program during grounding. And well, then of course, what, what needs, needs to be the case is that, that these guys actually have a single stable model because these are the facts that are obtained by the grounder in the end. Well, this was actually quite a lengthy definition of stratified logic programs, but I believe that if you work out a little bit why these, what these conditions here enforce, you will learn a lot about the grounding uh, procedures and how, how, how things work and when things can be simplified or not. Because to be honest, there's a very short definition of stratified logic programs, which is a logic program is satisfied if its dependency graph has no cycles containing negative edges. But well, at least I could not derive an intuition from this property here that would explain to me why stratified logic programs are completely evaluated during grounding. Hence, I gave you the lengthy definition to unfold a little bit the structure of stratified logic program and enlighten you uh, hopefully, <laughs> about why they have these nice features. Okay, that's it then for uh, simplifications. Next, we will look at rule instantiation.